Así estaban las calles de Kabul en julio de 2021. Y así se las encontró el equipo de importada que estuvo en Afganistán dos meses después, en septiembre. Un país, dos momentos y una protagonista. It was not fall of Kabul. It was not collapse of our all developments. It was collapse of humanity. Hoy, en portada, regreso a la oscuridad. It was Sunday, like 15 of August. Uh, I remember that that day that I wake up and I put makeup and I wore like a short Uh, like a dress with jeans, like casual. I went to bank because I didn't have any money. I went there and there were a lot of people, like hundreds of people. And I was waiting there almost two, three hours uh, because everybody wants to take money. And, uh, and gunshot started. Gunshot started and, uh, and people started to run inside the building. The manager, he came to me and he told me that I need to go home because uh, Taliban entered the city. So I started to run. Where are you? Where شما طالب است چی میگی؟ چی؟ چی ترسی؟ چی ترسی؟ تو لوده هستی خو؟ ما اگه ترس داشتم میگریختم خو؟ نگریختم اینی میست فهمیدی؟ تو چی؟ پاسپورتم در جیبه نست نگریختم میفهمی؟ اینی پدر نولد لوده اینی میدونم طالب آوردنی؟ I started to film, and the same time I was filming, I was also fighting, <laughs> arguing with some people at the street. When I came home, I called the president of the Slovak Film and TV Academy because I am a member of the, the academy. And then after a few minutes, she told me that Ukrainian, they are evacuating their people, and they have a flight at 4.30. If you can get to, to, to that flight, That would be great. So they can they can take you. Uh, I didn't think about myself exactly, to be honest. I started to think about my brother and his daughters, and I was like kind of role model for them. So they were very free, free-minded girls, you know. And I'm not going to let that they live under the Taliban regime and their, their dreams will be uh, destroyed forever. So I immediately decided, okay, I take the chance, I will go to airport, and I will take all of, all of my nieces with me. It wasn't even an hour, it was a few minutes that I needed to decide the most, the most difficult decision of my life, stay or leave. We went to airport, we did the regular checking, like normal, like you are traveling. After two hours, everything just changed dramatically. I 
media, uh, Taliban posted like their their photo that they 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 take over President Palace, and then there was a news that President left this amount of money. <laughs> I don't know if it is true or not, but so much money, okay, and the government collapsed. It was not fall of Kabul. It was not collapse of our old developments. It was collapse of humanity. I received threat, of course. I am I'm, I'm, I'm still in receiving. I don't have any protection. I don't have any bodyguard. And then I again I use my car. But if you see, we came today here. I use different way. I am not a security like uh, expert, but I do this kind of. Uh, things that just to avoid to be to be killed, okay? But uh, but I'm not sure about tomorrow. I'm not sure about after tomorrow. Julio de 2021. Acompañamos a Sagra de su casa a la oficina. Recorrimos con ella la zona verde de Kabul, supuestamente la más segura blindada por imponentes muros de hormigón y alambradas. Difícil avanzar entre tantos puestos de control. En ese momento, la capital era uno de los reductos del país que aún no habían tomado los talibanes. Desde que Estados Unidos anunció la retirada de sus tropas en abril, habían intensificado su ofensiva. Ya controlaban la mitad del país. Decidimos entrar en Afganistán antes de que fuera demasiado tarde. Los periodistas éramos un objetivo de los integristas y nada garantizaba que el país resistiera al implacable avance talibán. Taliban es muy anti-culture, anti-woman y anti-cinema. Esto es muy claro. If they return or if they take power, it is end of us here in Afghanistan. If they kill me, my dreams will die also. Antes de que los talibanes tomaran el poder, ya era raro ver a una mujer al volante en Afganistán. Un mes después, con el régimen talibán, ya no se verá a ninguna. Tampoco al frente de una organización pública. Sahra Karimi era hasta ahora la directora del cine afgano, la primera mujer en el cargo. Su mera presencia incomodaba a muchos. Una mujer decidida y valiente que rompe moldes es siempre una amenaza para quienes se empeñan en someter e invisibilizar a la mitad de la población. 
We have a very traditional country. We have a very patriarchal country. And being a strong woman, well educated, with experience of life outside of Afghanistan, and you have in your mind and in your style of life to bring changes among the society, it is something like a bomb here. Many difficult years I lived. And now we are sitting, it is the most difficult year of my life in Afghanistan. Muchos artistas e intelectuales afganos habían abandonado el país. Sobre todo, mujeres prominentes, periodistas, juezas, activistas, se habían convertido en objetivo de los radicales. Los asesinatos selectivos y atentados contra ellas eran una constante. Y el nombre de Sahra había aparecido en una lista negra. Aún así, ella había decidido resistir. And I, I'm not sure if Taliban uh, comes. So what will they do with me? Because I'm, I am very like outspoken. I am very famous. Everybody knows me. So uh, I am very good target for them. But uh, but I don't leave Afghanistan. Suddenly, within a few hours, thousands and thousands of people, they just entered to the airport to get to flights. So we couldn't make uh, the flight at 4.30 because a lot of people, they just entered to the flight and flight just take off. So about midnight, there was a no flight. The only hope was uh, Uh, American uh, ar uh, Army airplane. It was night and it was, people were so afraid. People were so, so like, uh, people just left their suitcases, everything, you know, they just run. And then, Suddenly, uh, U.S. Army started to, to come to us. Like hundreds of U.S. Army, push, uh, they shouting on us, push out, push out. And it was like, you know, it was like, okay, they didn't let us to go to, uh, even near the uh, airplane. So people were like holding, you know, the wheel of airplane. Any part of airplane that they could hold, they were holding just to get out of, of airplane. It was so, so shocking. When we came to army part, I saw all our government officials were standing there. I, the only filmmaker with kids <laughs> that were, we were so dirty, I saw all officials with cravat and their uh, like coats and they were standing. Those all officials that, that, that uh, weren't able to, to get together In the, when it was all, everything, they were always fighting on social media and their meetings. They were in the, under the same roof and they were escaping. When the plane started moving, I started crying and I was holding my brother and I started crying. But at that time, I even started filming that part, you know? I have a film. I even, at that time, I started, but I was crying, you know? 
because I knew that this time it is different. I knew that this time maybe I never return. I look at that city, you know. Uh, for the first time, I saw, I saw a big pain that like uh, like aura. Sagra Karimi logró volar a Estambul con la ayuda de Eslovaquia, Ucrania y Turquía. Había estudiado cine en Bratislava y en 2012 decidió volver a su país para reconstruirlo desde el séptimo arte. Nunca imaginó que lo último que filmaría allí sería su propia huida. Still I cannot believe, you know what happened. It was so much of 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 betrayal and so much of 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 lies behind all these years. It's time to end the war in Afghanistan. As we close 20 years of war and strife and pain and sacrifice, it's time to look at the future, not the past. manager of Bank he told me that Taliban entered the city I was like I thought that I am just falling you know it was it was such a such a feeling that I never had before never ever even even when my, my father died I didn't have that feeling you know even uh, even when they killed two of my employees I didn't have that feeling of falling apart, you know. Do you feel betrayed? Yes, very much. We feel betrayed. My generation feel, feel, feels betrayed. Very much. Very, very much. And that's that pain, you know. Uh, this make, make us so sad. El último soldado estadounidense abandona Afganistán el 31 de agosto. Su retirada estaba pactada en el acuerdo que la administración Trump había firmado con los talibanes en 2020. Al llegar a la Casa Blanca, Joe Biden no cambió ni una coma. En esa negociación no participó el gobierno afgano. Washington se comprometió a retirar sus tropas y a liberar a más de 5.000 presos talibanes. A cambio, solo pidió que no atacaran a sus soldados. No exigió a los talibanes ni un acuerdo de paz ni un alto el fuego. After that, the Taliban started to be really confident, you know? Because they said, okay, in that deal there is a, that, like, a, okay, we are not going to, to kill any Americans, but it doesn't matter if we kill Afghans. You know how many young people died during, during this, uh, from that deal till now? We never forgive U.S. I never forgive what, what they did to us. To be frank, uh, this was a mistake. 5,000, when, when they see that they are released because they defeated, and they are uh, released because forcefully, let's be put it this way, the Taliban are still thinking that. I, I think 80% uh, of them want to be part of the victory. Because of that, most of them went to the war. <laughs> A las afueras de Kabul se entrenaba el comando de las fuerzas especiales del Ejército Nacional Afgano. ¡Buenos! 
eran quienes actuaban en las situaciones más difíciles, allí donde hacían falta refuerzos. En teoría, eran los mejor preparados, pero la munición estaba racionada y su puntería lejos de la deseable. ¿Cree que el ejército afgano está suficientemente equipado técnicamente para hacer frente a la amenaza actual de los talibanes? از برکت همی تعلیمات است که ما در میدان های ماربه یا در میدان های جنگ میبینیم که کماندو و اسپیشل فورس نیروهای اردوی ملی افغانستان به چی شکل در مقابل دشمن های ای کشور می جنگن و خدمت میکنن و در آینده هم خدمت کردن ولی ای ظرفیت دارن که در مقابل دشمن های که سر افغانستان Los vimos prepararse ante una posible emboscada. La exhibición de fuerza y el mensaje triunfalista del coronel contrastaban con el parte de guerra diario. En el campo de batalla, el avance de los talibanes, primero en zonas rurales y más tarde en las ciudades, era inexorable. En muchos lugares del país, los soldados y policías afganos se entregaron sin ni siquiera oponer resistencia o abandonaron sus puestos antes incluso de que llegara el enemigo. And I tell them why, why did you leave the area? Uh, not only military but also like uh, civilian personnel. They tell me Muscovy we did not have enough food, uh, water, no um, uh, military equipment and supplies. The government was not even giving us any guidelines. It's not that the Taliban are strong. It's actually because we are weak as government. Las fuerzas estadounidenses habían dejado al ejército afgano vehículos y equipamiento militar. Las tropas extranjeras también les habían ayudado en su formación. Nada de eso sirvió para frenar al enemigo talibán. Todo lo invertido en 20 años está ahora en sus manos. Justo antes de su partida, los estadounidenses destruyeron lo que quedaba en el aeropuerto de Kabul. I think it was in the fall of Afghan army uh, because I think it was uh, some game behind with our own uh, governmental leaders because It was suddenly, you know, and because army, especially soldiers, soldiers were so brave. But the leader of leaders in army, they were so corrupt. La victoria de los talibanes mediante el uso de la fuerza era un secreto a voces, pero en Kabul la mayoría se resistía a aceptarla como un escenario probable. Pensaban que al menos la capital resistiría su embestida. En la ciudad no tienen popularidad. A veces estoy diciendo que los talibanes no están getting strong. El gobierno está débil. Incluso si succeden, no van a poder controlar. ¿Qué pasaría si los talibanes obtienen el poder de vuelta? Yo creo que en este momento no me parece. Y no me parece que en este momento me parece. El único político que nos vaticinó lo que ocurriría fue un ex líder talibán. Akbar Aga había estado en la cárcel por el secuestro de tres trabajadores de la ONU. Al salir formó un nuevo partido, pero se notaba que mantenía un contacto estrecho con los talibanes. El conflicto se va a solucionar negociando o combatiendo. ¿Qué cree que va a pasar? I don't believe uh, that Taliban uh, understand meaning and definition of peace. Peace doesn't come with war. Peace comes with talk. But you know, war is going on everywhere and they are talking about peace. And 
how did not people see what was coming? I think we were naive. I think we, we so much believed our government. Even our army believed so much our go government. I think we, we didn't uh, believe that our government is that much corrupt. There are very, very official like sources that they say the country was sold. Taliban played a very, very uh, uh, interesting game. They showed the world that they are negotiating because of peace, but under the, in other side, beyond those, those negotiations, they went, you know, taking over everywhere and talking with people and buying some of our politicians, you know. But our politicians, why they did left? They could stay and they could start the negotiation. They could continue the negotiation. They could face with Taliban and push them to accept some democratic values. Was your Harijan Patayru Kuri, dear Asani, with the Ragri Harijan? Our Panaya Dakari, which emerged from Afghanistan, in the Drushan the Paradi Ragri, Moadi Mohadir, the Mandavru, Democracy Ravalu, no Democracy, a less Halgot of Ubrish world for the Yaki. چی مو دیموکراسی ما نه پساد، دیموکراسی ما نه قتل، دیموکراسی ما نه غلا، دیموکراسی ما نه پخش. دا ها غشان دی چه افغانان دا جیسا کرک کوی. Afganistán está entre los 15 países más corruptos del planeta, según el índice de percepción de la corrupción que elabora Transparencia Internacional a solo siete puntos del país más corrupto. Un mal endémico que reconocía el entonces fiscal general del Estado. Y también Luis Aranwali de esta verdad y el calón de esta. De ahí ya que no es que no es que no es que no es. Pero nosotros también con muchas cosas que nos hacemos 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 بسات سطوح بالا قضايشان با محاكمة ما در تحت پيگرد ادلي قضايي قرار گرفتند. La sociedad afgana está cansada, harta de décadas de guerra que han dejado un reguero de sangre y destrucción. Primero la invasión rusa, luego los señores de la guerra. Después, los talibanes. Hace 20 años, Estados Unidos y la OTAN. Y ahora, regreso a la casilla de salida. La gran mayoría de la población afgana no sabe qué es vivir en paz. Y el 90% malvive con menos de 2 dólares al día, según los datos del último gobierno democrático. It's not just the war. It's also the collateral damage of war, the poverty. Every morning since I came here, I'm sorry, I got so emotional. Every morning since I came here, actually, since two days, I just deal with the level of poverty that people has. And there is no institutions that actually respond to them. They are just coming to us, people with high, d dignified people with high ethics. They come ask for $50 to pay their university fees because there is no job for them. And this is such a rich country, we, we could still use the opportunities that this country has. But because of the war, because of all these wrongdoings in this country and misdeeds of the politicians that people are experiencing this. Sorry. It's okay, I mean, it's normal. Afghanistan wasn't a miserable country or poor country. Afghanistan is a very, very rich country, like from natural sources and a lot of things. For that, a lot of big, big power, they are just focusing on Afghanistan. Why suddenly China is so interested in Taliban issue and cooperating with uh, Taliban? Because of our, 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 our rich natural sources, you know? 
stones that we have, uranium that we have, I don't know, a lot of mines that we have, you know, still untouched mines, you know. El nuevo gobierno talibán, formado por el núcleo duro de los integristas, de perfil ideológico y nada tecnócrata, tiene que sacar adelante una economía colapsada, en la que muchos negocios han cerrado por miedo a represalias. So people are starting to have difficult life. System doesn't work because a lot of educated and capable young people they just left the country. People cannot have access to food, to money. They didn't get salaries, you know? So they have a lot of problems. Septiembre de 2021. En portada regresa a Kabul para comprobar cómo es el Afganistán de los talibanes y cómo han cambiado los lugares que visitamos en julio. Matín ha pasado del despacho a la tienda. Ahora tiene que ser él quien atienda a las pocas clientas que entran a comprar ropa. Las ventas han caído en picado. Las mujeres solo piden prendas para cubrirse. Sarf talabat abar dobar amadan ke chun yek se bar model amade budan mi khastam mujabar ekasi kanam egan ba sahi diye bud mi khastam video bigiram. Diga ona khabar nashadan ki nam model astan ya je je fakat guftan ki inja kar mekanim va inja astam bud onar mamanat kadan guftan nam etanin ta ke filan nukumat malum shava ma elan kadim ke khana ma metanan sar kar khud bia ba shuma bia inda kar khud ali jaza nadanin. Dos meses antes, en julio, aquí trabajaba Mushda, una valiente de 22 años. Era de las pocas que lucía el pelo y los brazos y que se atrevía a hablar ante una cámara. También una de las escasas voces que auguró lo que se avecinaba. What do you think it's going to happen in the next months? Ah, es que با 20 سال اخبتر برگردیم به دوران طالبا اما امید بهتری را نداریم چون روز بروز اوضاع خرابتر میشه و نیروهای خارجی تمام شد از افغانستان بیرون شده میرن طالبا تعداد چند زیادتر میشه خود ما با چشم خود دیده میتونیم در شهر کابل که بگردیم فعلا هم طالبا موجود هستن اما به قیافه قبلی خود نامدن باز هم شناخته میشن که اینا طالبا هستن زندگی ما پس با سفر برمیگردم ما دیگه با زمان ست سال پیش برمیگردم مجبور هستم چادری بپوشم به قسم لباس پوشیده نمیتونم شاید حتی در خانه قسم گشته نتونم باید از چادری بپوشیم لباس های پوت بپوشیم امو پیران های دراز افغانی و چیزا Maybe you see these red nails. I, like two days before the fall of Taliban, I went, I went to beauty salon. Like I cut my hair and I went to beauty salon. I pedicure, manicure, I did it, my like food and everything. And What happens with these beauty salons and with this business? The first thing is that they just painted the, be the beauty salons walls or doors because they were woman, beautiful woman, picture of beautiful woman. And uh, because some of my friends, they are still in Kabul and uh, the city is dead. Women are afraid to get out of home. Uh, many, many biz business sh shut down. Justo antes del régimen talibán, ya era muy difícil entrar con una cámara a un salón de belleza. Era uno de los pocos lugares en los que las mujeres se sentían libres y también donde podían conseguir un empleo digno en una sociedad muy conservadora que les dejaba pocas oportunidades laborales. 
El tratamiento de belleza o el corte de pelo se hacían a puerta cerrada, lejos de las miradas ajenas. Solo una clienta nos permitió grabar. Entre todas, un temor común, la llegada de los talibanes. La violencia ha sacudido muchos lugares de Afganistán. Pero este barrio de Dasht Barchi, en el oeste de Kabul, es quizás el que más lágrimas ha derramado. En sus viviendas humildes viven afganos de la minoría Afara. Practican el Islam Chi. Perseguidos por el anterior régimen talibán, han sufrido los ataques más letales de los últimos años. ...8 de mayo de 2021... ...atentado con triple bomba... ...en la calle... ...a la hora en que las chicas... ...salían del instituto de secundaria... ...el despiadado ataque arrancó la vida... ...a 85 personas... ...e hirió a más de 140... ...casi todas niñas... ...aún no se sabe quién estaba detrás los talibanes, el Estado Islámico o Al-Qaeda. Dos meses después, volvimos al instituto con una de las supervivientes. No había clases, pero Zainab sentía que, al venir, expresaba su voluntad de seguir estudiando. Regresamos otra vez a Daste Barchi dos meses más tarde. Los talibanes, siempre armados, vigilan de cerca los centros educativos. En ese momento, el discurso oficial mantiene el compromiso de dejar estudiar a las niñas. La promesa se la lleva el viento. Finalmente, el nuevo gobierno talibán, formado solo por hombres, prohíbe estudiar a las niñas mayores de 12 años. These past uh, three to four years, just the new generation started to do like coffee shops, to do fashion, to bring new lifestyle, to started to build the, like this urban lifestyle and young people, they, they, how they look, how they travel, how they 
like it was like normal like other uh, other part of the world how would your life change if taliban take the power when taliban will come coming to Kabul, uh, we don't have any any where to to live here because uh, especially uh, myself i couldn't imagine uh, being here being in Kabul, being in capital being in my countries when uh, they want people being here i don't want uh, this Afghanistan. A new generation of Afghanistan, even many of them just escaped, but there are still millions of them inside Afghanistan. Maybe one, two, one year they, they accept everything, but then the underground movement will start. I think the world shouldn't, shouldn't believe in Taliban. So the world should, should take part very actively in Afghanistan uh, issue because if they just close their eyes, Afghanistan will be a very peaceful heaven for, for terrorists. And from Afghanistan, they will attack everywhere they want. Now it is the fear that, okay, if again this Taliban come back, if again this warlord take the, like, uh, all these resources and all these opportunities, like before, so what about us, normal people, who studied hard, who had dreams, and who want to, to fight to make true these dreams? What are your dreams now? Like before, make, make films. I will make the film that, how I, I left Afghanistan. Zahra ha venido a la muestra de Venecia, a esta burbuja de lujo, a traer una dosis de la más trágica realidad, la de las mujeres afganas ante el nuevo poder talibán. Su cine, cargado de realismo, siempre se ha centrado en las mujeres para denunciar las desigualdades. Su sueño, hacer cine, es imposible en el Afganistán actual. Con él, se desvanecen los avances conseguidos en los últimos 20 años. And where are the Afghan people's dreams? The dreams are still in Afghanistan. The dreams couldn't escape. But they are in prisons of Taliban. Por la fuerza tomaron el poder y por la fuerza reprimen las protestas pacíficas. Mujeres latigadas a plena luz del día. Periodistas apaleados por ejercer su profesión. El Emirato Islámico intenta vender al mundo una imagen de cambio y modernidad que en la práctica se da de bruces con la falta de democracia con una pérdida drástica de derechos y libertades, con el intento de anular a las mujeres. Es el regreso de Afganistán a la oscuridad más absoluta. But, uh, but 
but I don't leave Afghanistan. What do you think now? I left. I saw uh, there was my eyes was shining more, even we were in very difficult environment. But I left, you know. Uh, because if I stayed, uh, my family would get hurt. Uh, I don't care about myself, you know. Uh, but I don't want anything happen to those little girls, my nieces. Whatever happened to me, I'm so happy that they, are, they will have a good life. Uh, but I've, I want very much to return now, you know? But there is no way. Because now I am here, I am still the voice. And I'm still fighting, you know? But I, I, I just want to, to stay loud as much as, as I can. And to advocate. And to let the world know that what is going on inside Afghanistan. Oh, yeah, I left everything, you know? Home my dreams, everything. But I'm not going to die because of some Taliban. My dreams would not be going to die.